Hi, and welcome to a whole series of videos where we're gonna take a time machine and travel back to the late 1940s, early 1950s, where vacuum tubes were very common. Um, today, with the start of this series, I wanna talk about drums, tapes, and delays. So what exactly do I want to do? I have this drum here, and I wanna coat it with something magnetic and I want to use the spinning drum as a delay to have the tape coming back and delay what I have put on there. So let's pull out the whiteboard to explain that a little bit better. So let's say we have the shaft here with the drum. That's, that shaft is driven by a motor here. Motor, right? And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's suspended here, of course. Um, what I want to do now, let's take a different color. What I want to do now is I want to have tracks of tape on here. Right, like that. Multiple, of course. I only draw one for easier to understand. And then I want to have a tape head to the drum, right? like that that reads and writes data so i can have a i kind of have one zero one zero zero one zero one one zero out here right so that is the idea to have a tape like that and i can write and read to that so all of this sounds very easy uh but in reality it's not so easy as the first part for this drum is I need to figure out how to mount these tiny heads against this ginormous drum. So that's what we're gonna try to do today. But first we need to reassemble the drum because it's literally coming apart. Now I want, to, I want to mount the whole thing on this board. I also got this wooden thing as a spacer. So um, this goes here and then the drum goes on there like, like this. And as long as this is, this spins freely. So that's, that's basically the point a bit. So let's put that here and let's try to mount it with some screws. Okay, so now I mounted it to the board and I actually only put the screws through the board a little bit. Whoops. Yeah, it's definitely not that happy about the fact that... Yeah, so it, it's, it's not that happy about the fact that the whole weight is laying on it. Like it would be like somewhere here. Yeah, so like that it's a lot more happy than how it is now. So I need to get a bearing to put on here. Okay, I also I now found the bearing. Um, and the bearing seems to be fitting theoretically. It's even brand new and it's like somewhat period correct. So let me put it on here. Okay, yeah, I can clearly see that there is some problems with uh, the diameter. Could I? Could I put this thing into my fucking drill? I think I can. Ha! Huh. Let's interrupt you really quick to, for a word from my sponsor, PCPWay. Uh, I have already made a sponsored segment with PCPWay and it's probably not gonna be the last one either. PCPWay kindly offered their help with supporting me with this project and um, providing me with uh, parts and assemblies and other things that would be very useful for this project. PCBWay also offers those services for you guys um, at a very, very affordable price. 
If you go to their website, you can find all their services and there are a lot. I really recommend to check them out and um, thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Anyway, let's get back to struggling. After a long while of experimenting, I actually got a bearing slid onto the shaft and that actually holds now and I actually 3D printed a little mount that I can hold the shaft up and slide it into. Uh, yes, the hole is too big, but uh, I couldn't care less. And now there is. A, now we need to just mount it into the board. Oh, this is lovely. I love this so much. Precision engineering, as always. You won't get anything not precise on this channel. Never. How could I not make something precise? I definitely also didn't model this whole thing within like five minutes. I mean, it looks kind of decent, <laughs> considering I made it in five minutes. This holds now, and it also holds here, somewhat, and um, it spins. Now the question is how to mount, like I now need to mount the head here, or something like that. So uh, that's our next engineering challenge. Okay, so I am engineering right now of like little 3D printed mounts for the head. Um, but what I also need is like the head are gonna be pushed against the drum and I don't want the, the head to be impacted di directly on the, on, the, on the drum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of layers of masking tape onto the drum. So now we have a softer surface for the head to ride on basically and now it's not it's not as hard on an, on an impact and then while we're already at that we also need to imp like to to kind of put uh, the tape on it and so i have a little tape here i'm probably gonna take the tape out of here and um use that okay i now figured out a part uh, that part actually now has a foot and has uh, the head is actually larger than things so I can actually push it against the drum so I need to mount it as square to the drum as possible but actually let's not do that yet because I need to coat I need to coat the the drum with uh, a tape and I actually thought that the bigger tape like this is nine track tape um, which is a little bit stronger than the tape from the cassette. I should just be able to coat this. Like I'm probably gonna unwind a bit because this part doesn't look pretty. And then as soon as the tape starts looking less scrambled, like here, and then just start winding it up. So I'm gonna put it like here and just slice it. Like that. That wasn't a straight cut though, that's bad. Let's try again and make an actual straight cut. Perfect, that's a straight cut. Oh, there's a blanking thingy, my Bob. Okay, fair. I can't use that then. I need to straight cut out of the blanking thing. So then we'll try to put this onto here and then have another straight cut. Shit. That's not very straight, but uh, it's okay. Should be good enough. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it onto the t onto the drum with double-sided tape. Let's get that shit out of the way. And let's lay like a hammer on one side. Okay, I pulled you guys closer now. And what I'm now trying to do is I put I need to put the tape onto this double-sided tape here. Get it like super duper accurately. Shit, that's bad. Yeah, yeah, I have I have wrinkles in it. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to like cut along the tape now. What? 
So now I can I expect it to like get off. Should be able to like rip it up. Yeah, 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 that worked. Perfect. Perfect. I will start removing the the adhesive uh, the, the thing and I will just Put it on very carefully. Okay, this looks actually very good, but for, for uh, already, I am, I am, I am actually getting a bit confident that this might work. I don't know how well it will work, but it might work. There's a little overlap, which is fine. Just gonna cut and sticking it down, and it's almost a perfect seal. But. Uh, almost so it's it's not perfect which is not that well good actually i i positioned the camera a bit unfortunate but for a first kind of try this is actually kind of good if you look at it spinning it's not perfectly centered but that also doesn't matter too much when i just take i just take that same adhesive that i just used to attach the tape head, this might actually work because the adhesive is a little bit weak so I might actually get away with it and then just push it down gently Yeah, this might actually work. There's a little bit of touching involved. This looks good. Wait, let me go handheld mode real quick. If you look at this and also the distance between the the head you can clearly see that there is not a lot of distance this might actually work i am somewhat confident that this might work this could be super cool okay so let's try something stupid just because i'm curious let's try to actually just hook up a wire to the head and an oscilloscope and look if we can like just find anything on that because that's a data tape so there should be like something on it so we might be able to find some data on it or something in that kind of matter so let me get the let me get some wires solder it onto and hook up the oscilloscope Okay, I've hooked up some wires to it, or not. <laughs> well, that's a fail. Uh, I thought I've hooked up some wires to it, but my solder joints were cold apparently. Now I've hooked up some wires to it. Okay, here we go. So, let's take my probe. Uh, we're gonna hook up this to the signal and this to the ground. Okay, I've hooked this up to the oscilloscope and now the oscilloscope is showing nothing uh, and we're going to go to a very small thing and when we turn it nothing happens that makes sense we're going to pull the trigger to go very Yeah, no, you can't see shit. Yeah, I thought of that. It's just noise. So when I spin the, the thing, nothing happens. Yeah, I, I, I thought this would be the case. Um, because, uh, yeah, like it's it's just straight up not strong enough. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought, but uh, or, or there's, or alternatively, there's nothing on it. Um, we don't have anything to like see, but whatever, we'll, we'll see. So anyway, I will be redesigning some parts of this and just doing more research. And we will be also figuring out more timing things and like a lot more is uh, in this project than what you just saw now. But I call it a day for uh, this week's episode. Um, so if you like this video, please consider giving it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe. 
Also, if you really want to support me, I have a Patreon or a Ko-fi. The link is in the description. If you want to join there, there is uh, exclusive content for you guys. And also, I really appreciate your support. On the 15th of November, I will be releasing a new AP of mine. So keep your eyes out of that. This video has been full of songs of that new EP and I've used the them songs in work in progress stages throughout the last videos. I hope you're all as excited as I am. I am super proud of this. Anyway, have a good one. I'm out. Goodbye. See you next time. Bye.